Good afternoon again, everyone. We are still being joined by more people, but we'll start anyway. Uh, we are happy to have you. This is the second uh, webinar in our series of educational technologies. And we are happy uh, that uh, uh, Yusif Amiru from the University of, of Ghana is joining us. Um, just to tell you a little bit about him, uh, he, Yusuf is an educational technology practitioner with the University of Ghana Computing Systems and e-learning unit. He holds a master's in distance education and e-learning from the University of Ghana, Legon, and a postgraduate diploma in education technology from the University of Cape Town in South Africa. I think the other things, uh, he'll introduce himself as we move forward because uh, sometimes we under uh, 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 introduce uh, our presenters. So I will let him tell us a bit more about himself. Uh, thank you very much. For those who are joining us, uh, we are recording the session and it's also live streamed on YouTube. And here is the link for the YouTube if you want to share it with your friends or people can join us on Zoom. So I will let uh, Yusuf Amidu uh, take the... the, the the seat now. Uh, please, over to you. You might want to unmute yourself. Unmute, unmute. You are muted. Thank you very much, Irene, for the introduction. As you said, my name is Yusuf Amadou with the University of Ghana. Uh, my with the University of Ghana is to <coughs> help universities e-learning. So we have the university manager, the minister, and deliver a letter for the whole university. And that's what I'm doing. And this pandemic era, you can see, that's not easy at all because nobody was aware of this situation that has come. So we are working there at night to make the university running as far as the is concerned. And I'm happy to be here to give you or tell you or present some of the tools that you can use in this pandemic era. There are so many tools that can help you in this era that you might know or don't know how to use it. Some of them are free online, others you have to acquire by your institution and so on and so forth. So without making much time, let me tell you what I have as an outline for this presentation. At the end of today, we should be able to know most of the online tools, how effective they are, the features, is short bars and so on and so forth. We also look at learning management system, which is one of the powerful tools that most institutions use to deliver courses and manage students and the assessment. Then also look at massive public online courses, very powerful system for free courses that each and everyone can just go there, take a course, either pay small to keep amount of money for certificate or free of charge. Some of us benefit from the Image Africa, they are some of their most courses. Then we have tools that you can use to collect data. Now, because of a social distance, you cannot go to your responders or your participants to collect data from them because everybody is afraid of anybody. So you can sit at the comfort of your office, your home, on your bed, use these tools to collect data, and you go. You also have tools that you can collaborate with your teammates or your peers and so on and so forth. We have like Google Docs, we have Office 365 and the rest. So we will go through some of these tools. Then we look at artificial intelligence and virtual reality, which is one of the emerging tools which most people are using in the education currently. And finally, we look at social media. And most of you us are using was that for teaching and learning, which is very, very good and very interactive and very easy to use. And once you have a smartphone, there you go. Most people are not conversant with some of these online tools, but with WhatsApp, because we have been using day and night, they use it effectively and efficiently to handle your students. Okay. Innovative research teaching and learning online. To, be, to go online, you need your mind, your heart, and your hand to be online. So you should have a meaningful interaction with research materials 
lectures and tears online using your hand, your heart, and your mind. You should be what? Self-independent. You must be an independent and self-directed learner. So to be online and to use these online tools, you should be what? A self-directed, what? Independent learner. And now because of social distances, everybody's in the house. You don't go for lectures, you meet your peers, to discuss and so on and so forth. With the help of these tools, you can still be what? Active online with your peers and collaborate and share ideas and so on and so forth. Okay. Then, you should have confidence in the ability to approach a problem and figure it out on your own using what? Hands on, minds on, and heart on. To be a self directed learner, you need to be confident enough to know how to approach your task online. You need to be creative. You can always use problem based learning approach to learn. And once you are independent, you should know how to go about it, how to manage your time, and how to use all the effective tools to learn. Uh, Irene, can you admit those who are coming online for me because they are disrupting my presentation? And as I said, you need your hands, your mind, and your heart to work. To be an effective online learner, you should be very interactive enough. You should put your effort to be online because nobody is what? Matching you, nobody is monitoring what you are doing. So you should be more of yourself to know how to manage your time and what to do at any point in time. To be hands on, minds on, your heart on. You need all your effort to what? be online. And let's look at drivers of online educational presence. According to Susan Cole and Steve Robinson, so dynamic is the online environment that new technologies and techniques are emerging all the time. And nobody will tell you this. Now, new tools are emerging. Most of us were not using Zoom for teaching and learning. Now, that's good. Now, that would be great. Now, Google is coming up with Google Meet, which is another powerful tool that you can use for three months for free. So a lot of them are coming on. In the current situation, there are a lot of tools which are coming for teaching and learning. They also continue to say that the only thing that seems to remain constant is people's desire to transmit and receive information efficiently. And the tools are coming, so it's up to us to use it. We have to change our mindset towards the what the new direction. Because with this current situation, this problem that we are in now, you should have a change of mind. You should change towards the change. Uh, it should be part of uh, falling behind. They go on to say that and receive information efficiently to learn and to communicate with others, no matter what the means. That is what drivers, that is what drives people to shop, invest, and converse online. Is the same force that for people or compare people to learn online. And because of this problem, we are buying online. We are junior, kind of help and the rest. We are forcing to buy online. And the same for which is forcing us to go online to learn. Now, most investors, every investor is now going on, is online now. Even basic schools. High schools are online, and you don't have any other option to be online. And to be online, you need your social presence to be online. You need community prevent to be online. Then you need teaching presence to be online. And finally, learning presence. So to be online, you need all these components to be online. And based on the Susan and Steve's uh, speech or their quotation, you should have to prepare it to be online. And that's come to stay. Even after the pandemic, most people are going online. I remember one of my lectures, this, the student said, Sir, why don't you use half of our, our time online instead of driving to campus for face to face? But well, if you're very confident, you can be in your car, you can be in your kitchen, you can be at the market, wherever you are, and enjoy your lecture instead of driving a long way, long distance with heavy traffic to be online or to be in face to face lecture. So online has come to stay, whether you like it or not. And I can assure you, after the pandemic, most institutions are going to be online. Not fully online, but they're going to blend the two. And most institutions are going to be online. In Ghana, for example, we are expecting a huge amount of new intake because you are 
we're organizing the global transit job for the high school. And we are expecting more students to come to university. And without online presence, there's no way we can get this home for students. There's no way. We have to cast most of them, we have to leave most of them behind, which is not good for our current situation. So we can use online to get more students to run. Let's continue. And let's look at the power of innovative thinking from the three hours to five Cs, then seven Cs. Now before online, before technology, before innovative teaching and learning, we're looking at the three hours, reading, writing, arithmetic. Everybody have to, we have to read for the time, we have to write all the time, we have to write, do calculations all the time. And let's look at reading. Whatever you want to read, just go to Google, type this in, Pop, you have it. Writing, now you can even say, say something there. Uh, I sort of what, just type it for you. So now this has become much easier. You have Adobe, which can read everything that you want to learn. You don't have to take the book, wear your glasses, and sit down and learn. No, 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 no. Adobe can read it for you as easy as Abed, as easy as reading ABC. And now there's a new tool, which I would have developed. There's a student in the UK. You can just connect your device to yes. Go to your laptop, go to Google, whatever you think in your head, you don't even say it or type it, Google will search it for you. Fantastic. That is the era of today. That is what is going on now. 21st century era is what is going on now. And this pandemic, we need these tools to move on. You need to be creative enough to be online. You need to be a critical thinker because you problem based and current based learning on online. So, critical is very, very important, which Joe Ru has explained it in our next slide. We are going to watch a video from Joe who has talked a lot about what the five C's. He has also added two C's, which make about seven C's. Then you talk about what collaboration online. Now, whatever you do, whether you are in a webinar or MOOCs or LMS, you have to collaborate. Communication runs through all the activities of the C's. Computational thinking, fantastic. Go to Google, search for information, uh, machine learning. There you are. Digital intelligence, very easy to use, and you can get whatever you want to do at a finger of an eye. Now that's contact lens, which you can put on your eyes. When you see anything, you can go online, just blank, get information for you. And learning has become very easy. If you want to calculate something at first, you need a calculator, or you have to calculate a long, like long divisions, and so on and so forth. Go to Excel, computer, computational tech, and just type it, that you are. Use your any activity that you're going to do, just go online, type it there, you have information done for you. Now, learning has become very easy using what online tools. Now, let's look at what your role has for us. There's a short video here, let's listen to your role about the five Gs and the two Gs that we discovered. You need to start the sound on your computer too, because we can't hear the, the video. Oh, sorry. Yes, you need to start it and then we can see if, okay. if we can hear it, yeah. Can we hear it now? Not yet. Oh. I think it's uh, better to share it on your Google Drive and you send us the link. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay. thank you. Okay, let me share the link. I'll share the sound. Okay. Or is there a place, there's usually a place for sharing the sound. Uh. Uh, that's one of the problems of uh, Zoom when when it comes to sharing videos. It oh, will be always okay, okay. better to share the link of the video on the conversation that is on the okay, chat room. So let me send in the chat room so that you can go there and watch. All right. Uh, right the chat, the chat, the chat. Right. 
Yes, you might you might just need to explain to us the, the, the just a bit of what is contained and we can watch it later. Thank you. Yeah, what he's saying is that now he enjoyed teaching, he enjoyed lecturing, but he found out that his students don't like lecture or lecturing. So he discovered that they prefer to have their own choice of learning. So in view of that, he discovered, uh, he devised a new strategy for them to have choices in learning. So when he goes for a lecture, instead of lecturing them, he gives them activity to do in class. So the students will be doing their own activities in class, some of them watching video in class, some of them will be doing artwork in class, others will be doing uh, discussion in class, he will just be there as a coach or as a facilitator to facilitate what they are doing. And it has helped them a lot. So he has discovered this thing as part of what he sees, which is what? Choice. So as learners or as educators, you have choice of learning. You don't have to be one-sided, like, oh, maybe I like this one. I want to read all the time. I want to lecture all the time. No, I want to watch only video. So you can combine watching video, reading, listening, and so on and so forth in learning. So you shouldn't have one-sided. That's what was what is talking about here. And it has helped me a lot. So I will share the video in the chat room for you to also watch. With and see what is in the YouTube, you can search for Ro, Joe Rose uh, Services Explanation. And you can get it from the YouTube. Okay. So let's continue. Okay. Now let's look at affordances of a tool. Affordances of a tool. Before you can go for any tool, look at the affordances. Look at the features of that tool. Look at how easy you can use that tool. Look at how flexible the tool is. Look at how consistent the tool is. Is the tool adoptable? It can be used for collaboration. Is it affordable? Look at the size of your institution. Is it for free? Is it an open source? Can you go to the back end and what, make changes? Can you personalize the use of the tool? For example, some of the learning management tools like Modo, Sakai. You can personalize what to suit your current or your local content. Can you have analytics? Can you produce a report? Is it consistent? Is it scalable? Is it accessible for anywhere? So these are the things that you have to do. For example, Google Apps, it can be used for collaboration. You can share your documents across the board. You can edit, it's readable, it's editable, and so on and so forth. As well as Google 365. You can ask your institution to go, to go for it and have the full features, which is affordable, which is editable, which is shareable, it's collaboration. You can use to, for meeting, to share your document, and so on and so forth. As well, look at the uh, Adobe, same thing. So these are the tools I can do. So before I can get any tool or use any tool or buy any tool, check the affordance of that tool. It's very, very important. You can get a tool which doesn't have some of the features that will help you in your work. The affordance is one of the key things you have to look at when you are going for any tool, whether it's for free or it's for what? Enterprise or proprietary space of And let's look at building up your confidence level. Now, most people are really afraid to use a computer talking about what's going online. And you don't need anything to start. Once you know how to click, you can go online and start from there. You can apply what you already know and add to it by using new tools and techniques and adopt for the online environment. The little thing that you know, you know how to click, you can go online, just know the new that we are doing now. We are learning how to use the new tools now that we can apply in our digital activities, in our learning and teaching and research. You don't need a new or don't need to start from scratch. 
The little thing we do, just continue from there. Where the on, online environment differ is the technique and discovering new research, teaching and learning opportunities afforded by the new online environment. Now, because of the pandemic and the distance, social distances, now everybody has moved to Zoom. And we are using Zoom now. My university is using Zoom, which we have never thought of it before. But now everybody uses Zoom. Those who don't even know anything about COVID, they are using Zoom now. That's the order of the day. So once uh, this thing has started, you have to and you must go online, use these tools and learn. Use Google Docs, use Office 365, use Zoom tools, use Google Book Button, use uh, Google Meeting and so on and so forth. Go online and be there. And you have to think inside the box and outside the box. Now before the pandemic, we were all using what we have. But now you have to think outside the box. What is the best way to go? What is the best way to go now? You have to go to Zoom to teach. Everybody has to be online now. Everybody, I went to the institution yesterday. They want to go online. They don't have a clue of what to do, but they must go online at all costs. Accreditation is on their neck now. So they have to be online. And now I'll develop an online platform for them, for them to use. So once you're thinking inside the box, now it has come to think about outside the box. And outside the box is go online to get your work done. Go online to get your research done. Go online to collect your data. Go online to share your document with your peers, and so on and so forth. Now it's time to get online. Whether you like it or not, you have to go or you must go online. Platforms and multimedia tools for online meetings. I've mentioned some of these things already. Now, in this, we are going to look at some of the basic and common platforms that you can use for this pandemic era or the uh, COVID 9 era. We have products. Products are most often designed and branded under three types. Other is meeting, webinars, or classrooms. And meetings are suitable for more interactive events with involvement from audience. So meetings is for interactive. You have to ask your audience, get views from them, and you share ideas. Then we have webinars. This is what we are doing now. Now everyone is mute now. You have to wait for the presenter to finish with what uh, interact or ask questions. And this one is very good for conferences. Those who want to organize a conference, go for tools which are used for webinars, like Zoom and Go. Then we have classroom support tools. If you want to teach online, you can use tools like Big Blue Button to teach. And most of the LMs use this kind of what feature that you can use to teach. So these are the three things that you consider if you want to what use the platform online meeting tools. Or even for online meeting tools. There are many technical solutions and services for delivering online meetings. Some services are offered by well-established and several companies. Others are open source softwares. Utilities can be deployed from scratch with custom integration. So you can go for a free one, you can go for enterprise one, you can develop your own from scratch. Then giant industries or companies like Microsoft and Google, they have their own solutions for small meetings, that you can use. We have Microsoft Teams, we have Google Meetings. It's one of the tools that you can use. And most organizations, they are already what? In contact with Microsoft and Google. So once your institution is in contact with these organizations, you don't have to yourself. You can use MS Teams to do your activities, Google Meetings to do your meetings online, virtual meetings. Let's look at what Teams as for us. Now, when you go there, you just have to sign up for free. Then you log in and start what, using the meeting. It's just like the Zoom, but the only problem, Zoom can take about 1,000 participants, which this one cannot take up to that level. But very confidently and confidently. 
sorry to 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 interrupt um <clears throat> your your presentation is stuck at when you were trying to show us the video um it, it has not moved is it supposed to have moved it has moved it has moved no, we, but the screen is stuck. I don't know if anybody. Yeah, now we are at the right place. Thank you. Yeah, I've seen it now. Can you see it now? Arin? I mean, yes, 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 oh, yes, no, it's, okay, it's good. good now, it's good now, thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. So that is what MS Teams you can use for, just like what we are doing now, virtual meetings. Then let's look at Google Meetings, which become more competitive now, which is chasing Zoom. Google Meetings, Oh, this one cannot support it. Let me. You can use Google. Yeah, it's Google Meetings. And one thing I like Google Meetings is that even when you are in Google uh, Gmail, you can find the meeting to there. So you can be in your meeting, what and join. So you can join a video meeting. You can add and remove people from it. You can start your meeting from anywhere. Wherever you are, that is what Google Meeting, and you can sign up for free. And I understand that you can use it for from now up to September for free. Then we have enterprise plans, which offer all the features with full company support, but they are very expensive. For example, Zoom, we have free Zoom, which is only 40, 40 minutes. Then we have full Zoom which have unlimited what? Access, but it's expensive. Okay. Now that is Zoom. Zoom offers video conference with high definition video and audio and supports up to thousand participants. So you can imagine thousand participants. So if you have a big conference, go for Zoom. You can have full support of Zoom. Zoom also has real time messaging team chat and content sharing, along with built-in collaboration. Now, I'm co-hosting this meeting with Irene. Now, somebody who is what? Hosting the chat version only. Irene is hosting what? The video, and I'm what? Hosting the presentation. That's Zoom for you. With Zoom, you can have separate room for conference. You can have breakout rooms. You can have group chat while the presentation is going on, and so on and so forth. Uh, now that's why now Zoom has a higher market share. I show the market share of various meeting tools as we move on. Zoom has some recent security. That's one of the weaknesses that Zoom has. You all heard that there was a what security breach of uh, Zoom. There was a security weakness of Zoom, but they have what introduced a new tool, or they have what patched that security problem that they had, and now. As you can see, before you can join a meeting, you have to be in a meeting room, a waiting room, so that nobody can just join. The problem was, anybody can just join a meeting if the person has not been invited. That was the problem with Zoom, but then I have patched that problem. And now, they have introduced what? A meeting room. So you can go and wait for the host to what? allow you to, or admit you to the meeting. So now Google, uh, me, uh, what do you call it? Zoom has a room to what? to patch that problem now. And let's look at the price. From one to one, 40 minutes is free. The paid plan is $14 per month. So if you want the full version of Zoom, you need what? Every month, $14. So you can go for Zoom and pay $40, you can get a full version of Zoom. Now let's look at what Zoom for us. And one thing I like about Zoom is that they even provide uh, training so you can learn how to use Zoom effectively efficiently of Zoom. So when you go to Zoom, you can join a meeting, you can host a meeting, and you can sign up for free. Sign up for free, it means you can use the 
40 minutes free version. If you don't have the 40 dollars to give for the full version, it's not for free to enjoy about 40 percent, uh, 40 minutes. So you can join, you can already sign up and join here. And once you already sign up, you can go to Zoom and when you have a meeting, yes, in the meeting ID to get there. So we just sign in to Zoom and there you go. We don't have my time, so let's move on. You can sign up to get the free access or pay for the full Zoom. Okay. That is Zoom for you. And let's continue. Google Meet, and as I said, it's catching up with what? Zoom now because of the free three months or the free period they have given to be used for this pandemic era. So Google Meeting is a video conference service that comes with Google Suit. So if you have Google um, Suit already, have what? Hi, Hello. Yusuf. It's yes. me again. Uh, you are off camera. Um, I think you moved your screen. So you oh, are sorry, not visible. Sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah. you need to you. Uh, move your screen. Yes, please. Okay, yeah. now we can now. see you. Thank okay, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So Google Meet is catching up with what? It's competing heavily with Zoom. Because it's giving what? It's saying that from September, from now to September 30th, you can use it for free. For up to what, 20, uh, 250 participants and up to 100,000 live streams, viewers and meeting recordings and storage. Just like you can record Zoom locally or into cloud, you can do the same with Google Meet. You can join the meeting direct from calendar event on your email. So once you have logged into your Gmail, you can join the meeting from there. That's why it's become more common and more popular now. And when yes says pounds, says dollars, you can get this version, the full version. So just compare the sales dollars to what? $14. So you have to decide what you want to do. That is what Google Meets. We can go to Google Meets. From here, that is Google Meets. You can get started. Yes, sign up for free. And what? Start using it. And you need a Google account to sign up with this. So you have all the features here that you can watch. Just look at it and use the Google, this is the interface of what Google Meets, the interface, and you can learn most of the things from here. So you can just go to get started. Now, learn has become easy. When you go to get started, you can what? For the step-by-step -step approach to sign up for self up and what? Learn how to use Google Meets. You don't have much time. You can do the step-by-step -step approach or you cannot sign up here. Once you know the link and know where to go and how to start, you can just learn it yourself, and there you are. You are free to go. That is Google Meet. It's becoming more popular and popular nowadays. And now you can use it from now up to what? September 30th for free. Let's look at the current market share of some of the meeting tools. As you can see, Zoom is taking almost 40% of the market share. And we all attest to that Zoom has captured the market. Most institutions are using Zoom. Most companies are using Zoom. Even uh, ISOC is using Zoom. I can the giant organizations are using Zoom now for all their meetings and conferences. And I can Zoom can have as much as 5,000 participants. I, I know, and I know maybe this year, I just going to use Zoom and so on and so forth. So, Zoom. It's the order of the day. They are taking the larger share of the market. We have Go to Webex, is another tool. We have Cisco Webex. It's one of the tools that I really like. Webex is very powerful tool. You can try that one too. Adobe Connect, very interactive, very easy to use. We have Go to Meeting. I've enjoyed that one before. I sat up with a meeting, a workshop for about three months and we use Go to Meeting. Very nice to use. And others too. That can be about your hands on. You can go to Google, type list meeting tools. You can have a list of them. You can go through one on one, 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 uh, one after the other. Check the one that you want to use. You can try most of them. When you get the one you think is good for you, there you go. Most of us are using Zoom now because, because, because it's become very common. So now what I do is, if I'm using the free version, I can create like three meetings. I tell my students that we have 
one, two, three meetings. So once the first meeting ends, you move to the second one. So you can use our two hours for a free one, then you go. That's why we are using the free Zoom now. And if you want to know the source of this chat, you can go to this place. <coughs> Data analyze as markets slice so, uh, so, uh, so you can get it from here. This is the link or this is the source for this information. And let's look at the main features of online meeting platforms. Joke of ease of use for audio and video, registration and access, emission and procedures, transcript data and sharing. Recording, security and comfortability, multilingualism and accessibility. These are the features you have to look for when you are going for any meeting tool. Check for these features. Then we have the uh, interpretation in your analysis here. When we see great it has a full version. So for example, Zoom, video and audio is great. That's a full version. WebEx is the same thing. I like WebEx. Of video interactivity. So when we see great in this, what it has a full version of all the components you need. Then when we see good, good means is one of the features is missing. It's not bad at all. And it's good quality. So we can look at a book view button is good, registration, good, good, and so as we have most of them to be good. Then when you see, okay, it's sufficient for work, it means you can use it. I've got to compare it to the good and the great ones, and it depends on whatever you are using it for. So we can see that security, Zoom is okay, it means not all that we know. But WebEx is good, it means it's more secure than what? Zoom. Big Blue Button is good, Adobe is good. It's okay, right? It's okay, you cannot do this, okay. Then we have others two here. When you see poor, you must be very careful when you are going for any tool, which has these what features and it's poor. So these are some of the things you have to look at when you are going for any meeting tool. <coughs> these are the main features you have to look at, looking about the ease of audio, registration, emission and procedure, transcript data recording. You should be able to record whatever you do. Like now we are recording what? This presentation now. So after that, you can go back and what? Watch it and the part you didn't get it well, you cannot get it from there. Make sure it's secure enough. For example, if you are, working, if you are in a private meeting, to go for a tool which is more secure, then you can use what multilingual and it's accessible wherever you are. Good. Now let's move to LMS, learning management system, which I know most institutions are using LMS now. And now without LMS, it's very difficult for you to be online as an institution. For example, university. Even if university schools are using LMS now, most of you have gone for Google Classroom, what they are using now. Yes, last month, I took a piece of Ghana primary school through Google Classroom. They are using confidently now. Now all the hosts are in Google Classroom, they are using it for their students. And now most universities are using what LMS. LMS can also be known as course management system, learning management system, virtual learning environment, virtual learning system, and so on and so forth. And you can define learning management system as well defined by the e-learning 2016, that software or web application used to plan, implement, and assess learning processes. An LMS provides instructors with a way to create and deliver content, monitor learner participation, and assess performance. LMS provide interactive features such as threaded discussion, video conferencing, and discussion forum. Examples are Sakai, Edimondo, Moodle, Blackboard, Google Classroom, and the rest. These are the common learning management systems that you can use. And as we have a definition here, you can use to manage learning and research. Faculty members can guess what? Go to their course site, upload course materials, create assessment for students to take, so go there and download their course materials from there, take the assessment. Faculty or administrators can send an answer to, to, to students. 
So they can send email among themselves. They can go to messenger and send communicate among themselves. They can go to chat room and have live chat, virtual chat in the chat room. And can discuss about the course. After each lecture, a lecture or the faculty or the instructor can go to chat room, create a, a private room for that lecture, and they can go and what discuss. I learned this is from when I was taking a, a course from Image Africa, how to create a private room for any lecture. And it's very, very good for lectures and students to, what, to have feedback from the lecture, lecture and so forth. Now let's look at the examples of and my is and some of the interfaces. Edmodo, very powerful too, that you can use. And it's very easy to use. So for lower level, you can use Edmodo up to highest level because of the features involved of Edmodo. So it's easier to use. You can just log into Edmodo. And one thing I like about Edmodo is that you can use, if you have Google account, you can use it. You can use your Microsoft account to go to Google, to go to what? Edmodo. Let me try my Gmail to go to Edmodo. I have one here. And as easy as ABCD, and then no stress. Once I have my account and I've created an account there, when I go there and click on my Gmail account, automatically my page has opened. And with the modo, you can join even as a parent. So I, mean, I will advise the basic school to go for a modo, and you can invite the parents of their, of their students to the classroom to monitor what their boss are doing. You can create groups, you can invite your co instructor, you can invite your student via any email format. You don't need the solution I want to what? use for the Edmodo. Any email from I can what? use for Edmodo. It's one of the tools that you can use. I learned this one as a student that use it, and it has helped me a lot. I'm using side by side with my research education student, with my University of Ghana learning management system. And it's a very interactive tool, very good tool that you can use. That's Edmodo. Then let's look at Google Classroom. Once you have Google accounts, there you are. But I would advise the institutions to have contact with Google so they can give you the full version of their Google what, app. They have wonderful institutions. And once you have it, you can use all the applications, all the ones you see here, you can use them. And it's, you can have the full version of all the applications. Bloggers, uh, YouTube, you can create a YouTube account. You can use their Google search for free. You can use the institutionalized Gmail, which I will have your investor, investor or institutions but account. You can use their calendar to for the activities and so on and so forth. You have the needs to here, which you can use as part of what the usage. So I advise you to what talk to your institution, talk to Google and get the IG suit or And it's free of charge. For the moment, Google will even give what incentive for using their services. And you can use the collaborative tools like Google Docs, Google Sheets, Slides, and so on and so forth. Collaboration with your students and the peer to peer and so on and so forth. That is Google Classroom and Google Seals. Let's move to Almighty Sakai. You use it to be called Vula. It's an open source that you can use. And I'm using this one effectively as a student, as, a, as an instructor, and as an administrator. So, can, as an instructor, can go back and create courses for faculty, or you can go in and add courses and add course material, resources, videos, and so on and so forth, create assessments, uh, mark attendance of students, send information to students with LMS. So they can just go online, download reading materials, take the activities, attend the assignment, take tests, and test is instant. As soon as you finish taking tests, automatically you have your results. Not like you have taken the paper test and the, the paper explanation and so on and so forth. I enjoy using, so I advise the University of Ghana this is education to adopt the Sakai test and quizzes. And we are using it for the past four years. It has been helping us. We have thousands of students. And we don't, there's, since we have started, we have not had the issue of missing grades. Everything is in the computer. Once you finish and click on submit, automatically you see your grade. There you are, you are gone. So our advice most institutions to use LMS. 
which is a kind of very good one that you can use. You can use the open source version. You can also talk to one of the institutions to get support. Then after a year, you can go on your own. We use, the University of Ghana use long site for about a year for the support. And now we are on our own. We can do everything for ourselves. And we have customized to see, so you can see the University of Ghana page now. We have the University of Ghana. It's our interface now to go to Sakai. And when I show my website to you, you, you enjoy it, you enjoy it. So you can go to your course site and do whatever you want to do as a faculty. So you can go there and enjoy from the instructor and so on and so forth. That is learning management system. So these are some of them. We have Blackboard, which is enterprise, you have to pay to use it. Modo is an open source. You have to another platform that you can use as a learning management system. There are plenty of them. There are a lot of them. You can go to Google, type in list learning management system. Go through some of them. You can find the one which will suit your organization or institution. Then you are gone. It's not only for educational purposes. You can also use it for training, for organizational training and organizational management and so on and so forth. So it's not only for what? Institutions. That is learning management system. Okay. And let's see some of the common features of good learning management system. You should have easy graphical interface. I want to go to Vula interface. Very, very nice. It's even appetizing for you to go there and learn. So you can what? Get your own interface, customize it to suit your own. Customization, as I've already mentioned, you show you know some kind of one. We have our own interface for learning management system. We're not using the existing one, we have our own interface. So any good learning management system should have that feature. Virtual classrooms, as I said, so you have a live chat. If you, you know some kind of, you have embedded uh, Big blue button to Sakai. So once you're Sakai, you can also use big blue button once you are there. Then we have content creation. It's one of the features that you should have for any good learning management system. That should be to interactive, a good content or a good course site. Then you should have a robust test. You should have a robust test and quizzes. So you can do your tests, instant tests, and get your results. If you have Thousand students, you have more students, they don't to do paper tests. Go to Sakai, go to the LMS, create your test there. Let's do take the test. There you go. Very easy to use. And once you're done, automatically the test will move to the grade book. You can then with your grade book and send it to whatever you want to send it. Or send it to your institution. Very easy to use. And the whole institution can use it for your academic activities. Now you can look at the integrating virtual classrooms, as I already mentioned it here. So enable learners to get into learning on each new e-course they sign up. Once you really sign up for the course, as soon as you get there, you see all the course tabs, you can just what, go there and what, take your course. Technical support. Any LMS good ones you have a technical support. As I told you, some kind of technical support. You have those who work at the back end, now that administrator who provides support. If there's any problem, they will go in and provide support. We have an email for the technical support. So if you have any challenge using our system, you can just send an email and the administrator will just 24 hours, that should be there to support you. you customize, as I said, and you have multilingual. Any good language you have multilingual. Saka has the same thing. Cost management. Fantastic. You should have it for any learning management. You should provide a report, a critical report. You should see students what? I think you can track students and you can generate a report on the number of courses and so on and so forth, number of students in the semester <coughs> and so on and so forth for any good learning management system. Communication. Perfect. Any learning should have to communicate using what? Either an announcement to or messenger or email to. You have this tool to what? To communicate. It should be SCOM compliant as a standard for any learning management system. SCOM compliant. You should have good data storage. If you have 40,000 students and 6,000 faculty or 5,000 to 1,000 faculty, you should have them, you should consider the number of data you are going to receive at any point in time. So I would advise that you go for a cloud service. That can hold volume of what? Data. And it should be in trouble. 
And in that man, let me say, which is very good to have what this device or this uh, uh, feature. You have a very big storage device. You can what? You can store most of your data to the learning manual in your server. Accessible creation, my I'm going to talk about this one. Then e commerce. So, direct payment through LMS made financial administration simple and what? Straightforward. And as I said, it's not only used for what? Teaching and learning. It's also used for what? Administrative purposes and other business what? transactions and training and so on and so forth for learning management system. And let's move to two that are going to collaborate to share with your peers, your colleagues, your friends, and so on and so forth. A collaboration tool helps people to collaborate. The purpose of collaboration tool is to support a group of two or more individuals to accomplish a common goal or objective. Now, as we are in Zoom now, we have shared everybody is enjoying now. It's one of the things that you are talking about. Here. Talking of Google Docs, you can create a document with a group of people with a team. So when you are doing a research, you don't need to meet to discuss your findings. Just create a Google Doc, put the document there, whatever you have, just put it there. You can edit, you can read, you can share, you can download and so on and so forth. Office 365 is the same thing. Adobe Acrobat Reader, you can edit, you can share. Team Weaver, I will even mention Team Weaver. It has fantastic features that you can use. I'll show some of them to you when we go to the next slide. Google Docs, a very powerful real time collaboration tool for document authoring. And as I said, you can create a document and alter a document and edit using Google Docs. What it means you can edit at the same time. You can have more than one person to edit at the same time. And you see them editing simultaneously. So if you're working in a document, just use Google Docs. Share with all your teammates, then they can go and what? Work in the same document at the same time. Users can produce text documents, that presentation, spreadsheets, drawings, and survey. One document at the same time. Let's look at Google Docs. So to go there, you can type HTTP, Docs.logo.com. That is the what the URL. Now, once I've, I have the Google accounts ready and I've already logged in, the one that is open for me. So when you go, you go to your upper top right, left corner of the page, top left, you see main menu. You can use Docs for documents editing, document sharing, Google Sheet for spreadsheets. Slides for presentation, forms for data collection, and assessment that you can use. These are the tools you can use in Google. They have Google Drive for storage. The existing one can take higher storage, but the, this one, the private one or the free one, is up to only 100 watt gigabytes of data that you can use. So go for what? The distribution one, and you can enjoy what Google Drive. So I advise you to go for what? Go drive to use it for all these activities. You can use this but free of charge. Now let me show you an easy of editing document before we move on. You can open a new blank one or a blank document or work in an existing document. For example, I have a document here. Let me open this document. Okay. Edit Google Docs. I can share this document. I can share the document with my teammates. I'll just enter their addresses here. Or I can pick them one after the other. And once I've added them, you have full access to this document. I have to say that they can edit this document. So just enter their email addresses or pick them from here, one after the other. Then you are gone. And these people have access to this document. 
and they can work in, they can edit, they can print, they can share with other people when they have full access. Okay, so after sharing, you can edit whatever you want to edit. For example, you can share your thesis with your supervisor. The supervisor can just go in. I want to edit the past. So you just highlight this part. Then you see a plus sign here. Just click on the plus sign. There you go. You can enter whatever you want to enter here. You save. Yes, yes madam. We we cannot see what you're doing on your side. Oh, sorry. No, wow. Are we? Did you want us to see what you're doing on your side? Yes. Um, we cannot see it because you're still sharing. You're still sharing the the PowerPoint. I think you needed to share when you clicked on the Google uh, okay, link. Okay. You need to okay, share okay, that okay, link okay, now. Okay, okay, I'm doing that one now. How is it now? And um, yes, there we are. Yes. And okay. as we do that, I would like everyone to know mm -hmm. that we'll be going over the hour by about 10 minutes because it's almost finished with the presentation. Please bear with us. Okay, Yusuf, you can continue. Okay. So you can edit by just highlight a part of your work, then click on what? Comment, you can comment and what? When you finish, and one thing is that Google don't save automatically. You don't have to go back and save it and so and so forth. Google does. This thing applies to what? Google Forms, Google Slides, and so and so forth. You can use these ones as you move on. Okay, let me go back to my presentation. Okay, now we have 565. It's the same thing, just like Google Drive. Once we have it, but you have the full access. And you can have the online version when you go to this, go to office.com. You can have the online version. So if you don't have Word, Excel, PowerPoint on your PC, you can go online and have this version. Full version online, free of charge. You can save your document online, wherever you go, you have access. You can share, you can collaborate and so on and so forth with Google, Office 365. Okay. Adobe, same thing. With all the features with Adobe, you can use it. And you can visit Adobe to get this full access is one of the two that you need to collaborate with your peers and your teammates and so on and so forth. Now the next one is Team Weaver, powerful tool. You can have remote support with Team Weaver. So wherever you are and you have a problem, you can to Weaver to have a support. And this is the site of Team Weaver. Have you seen the site? Oh, this thing has taken over. Sorry? Have you seen the time site of the team Uber? Uh, you, you see, if you go to the yes, now they have come. Yes, now it's okay. there. It's good what to confirm. Thank you. Yeah, okay. The team Uber. This has been there for a long time, but now because of the new government problem we are in now, they have added more features. You can learn it for free. And with this team, if I can teach from anywhere, you can share files from anywhere. You have a device which you can use to support somebody in any remote area. There's a video, I don't know if you can watch the video now because of the time. You can watch the video now. That's the video I want us to watch. Since, since, we have, since we have very short time, we might not be able to watch the video. Okay, okay, is okay, is okay, that okay? okay? We can okay, share okay, the okay. links. Yes, please. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll do that. I'll do that in the chat room. Okay. Okay, so Team Weaver has remote access. It has augmented reality device that you can use to connect in any remote area. Once you have a device, you can help anybody who is in trouble, any client that you have, wherever the person is, you can do end to end. It has maximum privacy. That nobody can ever use but enter into your system. That is what Team Weaver. MOOCs, massive open online courses. If you want to learn things on your own, if you want to know more, don't waste time. Some of us have taken this opportunity of this COVID-19 pandemic era to upgrade ourselves through MOOCs. Thousands of courses online. 
thousands of courses are online. Learn MOOCs that go to Coursera, Odemi, and so on and so forth, with massive open online courses, which we have accredited universities like Stanford, UCT, MIT, Oxford, who are running these courses online. Please take your time, go to Coursera, go to Odessity, go to Khan Academy, get yourself abreast with them. any course that you want to learn. Every course is there. Every course on this planet, you can find it there. I saw a course, how contact tracing, current one they have created. So if you want to learn how to do contact tracing, you can learn it from what? MOOCs. So please, you should take this opportunity. Now, most of us, we are in the house, we are looking from the home. So you have enough time to learn, to update yourself, to learn more. You don't have to, if you are a scientist, you don't have to be a scientist. I don't, I don't want to know anything about accounting. You cannot accounting as a scientist. You cannot commerce as a scientist. You can learn um, computer science or computer programming as a medical doctor, and so on and so forth. Through MOOCs, very interactive, it has videos, it's a, you can read it, go over and over and over. If you miss a date, you can go back and what? Catch up. That's why I like MOOCs. It's one of the things you can learn. So please take your time, go to MOOCs and learn from there. That's one of the MOOCs you can go. We have Coursera, we have the site there, edX, Audacity, Allison, Educat, Khan Academy, there are some of the common MOOCs sites you can go and learn, free of charge. If you want a certificate, you just have to what? Pay a small fee, then you are go. And these are credit certificates that you can use wherever you go. And you can learn any course of your choice through MOOCs. Artificial intelligence, now that's the order of the day. Artificial intelligence, defined as the theory and development of computer system able to perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence, such as perception, speech recognition, decision making, and translation between languages. I watched a video, it was very interesting that now we have robo lawyers, robots which are lawyers and can understand thousands of languages. It can go to court and what? Defend anybody from any country. And as I mentioned, we have contact lens which can go online, you can check prices, you can check anything that you can use, you can lay your hands on. That's the era we are now. So you have to abreast your time, you don't have the person falling behind. Get yourself abreast and follow the trend now. Go online, learn more. There are a lot of tools online that you can use, a lot of activities that you can take, a lot of courses that you can take online and abreast yourself the current trend. Don't waste your time. Now let's look at machine learning. Now, when you go to Facebook, it's using machine learning. And it's part of artificial intelligence tools. So machine learning goes through what combination of big data. Facebook has it, Google has it. The system is huge amount of data based on, based of which it can learn to identify patterns. Now, if you are able, to, if you are somebody who buys online, anytime you go there, you can see products which are similar to the things that you have been wondering because of this kind of what learning that they use. Based on the identification of patterns, artificial intelligence applications such as image recognition or language translation become possible. So they can assume that you like this one, these are your emotions and so on and so forth, based on this what devices or tools. There's a tool called Chatbot. Chatbot can help you to organize online meeting. It can respond to messages from the participants. So you can try Chatbot and see. I don't have time to go through because we don't have much time to go through this thing for you. So you can try Chatbot, you have to learn so many things. And then when you go to a site like uh, Amazon.com, as soon as you get there, somebody will just type, hello, welcome. how can I help you? It's one of the Chatbots. It's artificial intelligence. It's a robot which has embedded into the website and can just welcome you. It's assumed that when it's online and whatever you have to give you an answer. It acts like a human being. It has human feelings and so on and so forth to interact with the human beings. So this is one of the things that you can watch. 
I think we, have, we can share this uh, slide with you so that after the uh, presentation, you can go back and what? Go through some of these things. We don't have much time. Content moderation. Now, Facebook has artificial intelligence and content moderation, which can remove hate speech, fake news, harassment from Facebook. And this is one of the things we are using now to remove this thing from their site. You'll be surprised that you can put something on Facebook and that's how you put it, it's not there. And you can report abuse to Facebook for them to remove it. And this device can what, go and search for everything online to what, get it out of the Facebook. So this is one of the things they are using now. Social media, fantastic. And I know in my university, most of the lectures are using WhatsApp for teaching and learning. They record their voice to, as a lecture to give to your students. So they can comment, share, so let's have a presentation, make a slide online, share learning materials online, articles, videos to their students using what? Facebook, uh, using what? WhatsApp. And it's becoming more and more what? Popular now. I felt before I got to know LMS, I was using Facebook to teach. My first online teaching was on Facebook. And I added my students to Facebook. We were chatting after the face-to-face -face lecture. I was uh, sending the uh, documents and learning materials to them, and so on and so forth. And now Twitter is one of the things that you can use to learn online. Most of the courses, they use Twitter as one of the components. And to become a digital scholar, you have to do some of these things. You have to communicate, you have to what? Uh, uh, contribute to the digital footprint in terms of online. LinkedIn has what? An online learning now. You can go to LinkedIn and learn from them. Now, most organizations also have what? Their social media. And even on Sakai, we have a tool called Common, which is part of social media on Sakai that you can use. So social media is one of the things we are learning and we are using for marketing and other things online now. Thank you very much. I'm done for the presentation. If you have any question or any contribution or any comment, you can let us know. Um, thank you very much, Yusuf. We appreciate you very much for that wonderful, wonderful presentation. I think Ralitsa is here and was picking um, uh, uh, the questions. So she will uh, pick a few that she can um, uh, present to you so that you can answer them. So I'm handing over to Ralitza, please. Okay. Ralitza. <laughs> Thank you so much, Irene, for um, upgrading me now. Um, I, Yusuf, there was a few questions about MS Teams and also using it for LMS. So I'm going to put it now in the text chat area, and then you can respond. Can you, can you mention it? MS Teams and also um, using it as LMS at the same time. Uh -huh. if, you can, if you can use the MS Teams as LMS. In fact, I haven't used it before, but I know you can use it for something like that because we are using it for our projects. Why are you going to use it for a project? You can use it for what LMS. But I advise that <clears throat> you go for a full version of LMS, like Sakai, Modo, Blackboard, and what have you. That's a full features. It's not limited to some of the things that you cannot get from the teams. Okay. Right? Okay. Thank you very much. There was also another question about if the Privacy issues regarding Zoom, if you know if it has been addressed. It has been addressed now. I even mentioned it. They have, they have patched the, the security uh, looking in the heart. That's why they have introduced the uh, meeting, uh, waiting room. So you can activate the waiting room. So before anybody can enter into your meeting, you should allow the person, admit the person to the meeting. One of the patches that you have introduced. So now they are able to address that issue now. So or not able to enter into meeting anyhow. Okay. And so I think that um, if other people would like to 
um, add a few more questions since we are a little bit over time. If, if there are a few more that people would like to put up. Is there any more that people would like to ask? Yes. Um, you can even take the mic. And you introduce yourself, please. Yes, Ebenezer from Ho. Okay, Am Ebenezer, we hear you. We hear you. You, you, can, you can put up your question now. Eben. Yeah, thank Eben. you. Congratulations. Yes, Eben, thank you. how are you? I'm fine. How are you too? Eben was yes, my question Eben. is this. <laughs> thank you. My question is this. Uh, in this COVID-19 uh, situation in which we are now, there is a call for us to get to students whilst they are with their parents now. But the unfortunate situation now is that, uh, that most of the parents, especially in Africa, are not literate enough, especially as in going onto the computer. How can we resolve that situation so that our parents can also be hooked, so that they can know what their students are doing? Now, uh, 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 <clears throat> if you, hello everybody. The guy who just asked the question was my mate at the University of Ghana, and he's my friend too. Now, most people, Andrew, are using smartphone now. And you can be sure that nobody told you how to use the smartphone. Computers are not easy to come by. So what I know is that, and from practical experience, the parents are using their smartphones for their children to learn, like in the University of Ghana Basic School. The, the teachers send their assignments that course material through uh, WhatsApp and the uh, Google Classroom. And they are using their smartphones for their children to learn from there. So they see the person, the children will write the persons, and we take a picture and send back to the uh, teachers through WhatsApp or what, through the Google Classroom. That's what they are doing now. So you can, instead of worrying yourself to get a laptop, once you have a smartphone, you can go. All right. Whether it's a Zoom meeting or a learning management system or WhatsApp, you can use it to do it. And it's the Thank easiest you. way to solve the problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much, Eben. Any more from the floor? We would like to hear from you, everyone. Uh, yes, my hand is up. Okay, thank you, Professor Yawahine. Um, please. Professor, no, uh, Mr. Professor, I was a hmm. Yes, Prof, we hear you. Your yes, question. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, you see, for this wonderful presentation. I've really enjoyed it. I thought I knew uh, so much, but you've added another mileage to my uh, learning curve. Now, to talk about parents and how they should catch up, I, I believe uh, it has dawned on us now as Africans that we need to close the skills gap. And when we talk about the skills gap here, we're talking about the digital skills gap. We are so far behind that if we don't play the catch-up game, we will never get there. We all oftentimes, I mean, we say, oh, we will get there, we'll get there. But nobody's waiting for us to get there. By the time we get there, they will have gone. They are not waiting. So we have to leapfrog. We have to find a way to leapfrog. Because if we don't learn as parents, or as guardians, uh, the hard way, our kids would take it also for granted that they wouldn't want to do it. Even they may have the smartphone, but wouldn't use it for learning because we ourselves are not there yet and we believe that someday we'll get it. So it is about time that uh, we wake up uh, about the digital skills gap and uh, plenty of digital skills, even the basic dis digital skills we don't have. What about the intermediate? What about the advanced? Okay, so this is what we need to uh, be, become advocates for. And uh, of course, as individuals, we can do so much, but organizations need to step up, governments need to step up, infrastructure is heavily needed 
instead of thinking about building more brick and mortar classrooms, we should be thinking about building infrastructure for the superhighway of the 21st century, which is the fourth industrial revolution in New York. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Now, if you care to know, Prof is my mentor. I'm right on his shoulders. Whoever I'm on now is from Prof. He's my mentor and my coach and my everything. Prof, thank you very much for joining this conversation. You're welcome, Alaji. Right. Um, thank you very much, Prof. Um, a few more. It could be a contribution. It may not necessarily be a question. Can we take one more and then we can bring the session to a close? Yes, Madam, I had it up. Okay, thank you very much. I am a Hello? Hello, we can hear you. I think now we have sorry your audio is dropping a little bit now say that I work with Ghana Education Service thank you and Ghana Education Service has a policy that prevents the students from using smartphones. Okay. Now with this presentation, vis-a-vis -vis the COVID-19, I think it's necessary that we allow the student to use them. Now the, the, the basic line, the notion is that the smartphones expose them to some undesirable behaviors like homosexuality, and other immoral acts. How can we use the social media properly? How can we weave it within our teaching and learning so that we can control that part of undesirable behaviors? I, I don't know what if you, you see if can give any idea, advice on that. Hello, Yusuf. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You can give some response to that. And yeah. talk uh, about it in our yeah. next webinar. So yeah. we want to hear you, please. OK. So you are talking about how we can what? Use social media for yeah, that, that activity. We can integrate social media in our learning Whilst at the same time, we control the exposure to undesirable behaviors that influences the students. Now, this one, from, from my point of view, there are two ways of doing this. The one way, if you have a standard social media mm -hmm. for the institution, you can control by maybe writing a script to minimize going outside the domain. That is one way. More so, the second one is you have to point out the students that this one is for educational purposes. For example, I'm using Facebook for my students, and that, that there, was, there was a rule. The only thing you can post there, the, you cannot go outside our environment. And you cannot move something to what we have there. So the first one, you can what? Restrict whatever medium you are using for nobody can watch, go outside the environment. The second one is to advise the students, conscientize them that this is for educational purposes. And using this will help you in the ABCD or in your future. Going outside the domain will not help in any way. Because when you go abroad, the wise, the wise students are using it so the smartphone for their for their case. And in school, they are using it. So it's up to us to also what? 
point out them, advise them, encourage them to use it. Because whether you like it or not, it has come to stay. That's my take for it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I, I have a question and a comment. Uh, am I on? Yes, you are on. Okay. Uh, uh, um, all right, thank you. Now, the, the, the issue of implementation of um, a learning management system, uh, I want to ask uh, Mr. Yusuf, is it, um, I think it should be a university-wide and institution-based uh, approach, a, yes. a kind of a policy that drives it, yes. not yes, what yes, um, a constituent of the institution will be able to operate. It must be at, at the larger scale, I guess. Yeah, that is perfectly true. But if your university is not ready as okay. individual, you can okay. use your Google Classroom for your students. Okay, okay. Yes, because I know from my university, before we introduced Sakai, some lectures were using Modo, Google Classroom, and I was using, uh, what do you call it, uh, my LMS. I was using Facebook. But now, because the institution has adopted Sakai, everybody's using Sakai now. So it's preferable in this to go for a institutional one with a policy to guide the usage. But if your university is not ready, don't waste time. Don't waste time. Go for one of the free ones for your students. And it'll be very comfortable. All right. All right. One thing I like about LMS is that when you, after you develop your courses, every year just to get it and you are gone. Few updates, then you are gone. You know how to. Roll back the system all the time. All right, thank you. Um, I, I just, I also have a comment. Uh, you know, Prof did mention that um, we should try to close up uh, the skill gap. You know, uh, I think that, um, well, in the case of Nigeria, for instance, uh, as we speak at the moment, most there is this divide uh, between, because of course here in Nigeria, private, institutions, you know, thrive more than public. So there is a situation, as we speak now, uh, during this pandemic, uh, students in private universities are not missing anything in Nigeria, as we speak. They are not missing anything. They are, you know, they, they, they continue with their work. They are doing all that should be done as though, you know, school uh, is in session. But for public university, that is not the case, uh, you know. so. I, I think that uh, in closing up the gap, uh, government needs to do more. Just like Prof said, we need to build more uh, IT infrastructure that can actually uh, you know, power this initiative, this new normal initiative. And of course, the, 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 the public institutions should uh, have more advantage, even over private. But um, just painting the scenario here in Nigeria, as we speak, private um, university students are having a good time continuing. No, no break in their calendar. There is no alteration in the university calendar. When the pandemic is over, they will continue from where they have been on, like, um, you know, uh, but the public university that, um, of course, we have lost the year already and um, the, 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 the calendar can't be the same again. So I think it's, uh, uh, it is very important for for government to you know really pay attention to building IT infrastructure that can drive uh, online learning by public universities. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much for that contribution. And um, Yusuf, thank you so much, and thanks everyone. Um, Mr. Yusuf, we would like to hear um, your closing remarks on the session, and um, hopefully we can continue again in our next webinar next week. And we will really, really have a great session. So Yusuf, over to you. Can we hear your, your last comments for the day? Thank you very much, Rally. Uh, as you have all been saying, the community has come to stay, whether you like it or not. And it's going to be with us for a long time. So please, this tool that you have uh, been informed now or today, Let's use them. It will help us in every activity that we do. Either your office work, 
or your academic or your research, use them, use them, use them. And you will never be part of the falling behind. Thank you very much, Irene. Thank you very much, uh, Riley, and uh, my other guy, and uh, even Africa for giving this opportunity to present this important topic today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for joining. And please remember to fill out the course and the survey for us. And we look forward to seeing you next week. And we keep the conversation going. So join us same time next week. And let's have a lovely conversation. We'd like to hear from you. Thank you all. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.